math can be confusing sometimes and it can act very weirdly. In fact, there are many things in math we are unsure of, even though we made those things and made those assumptions about them. That's why in math you have to think outside the box. Before we start, I just want to remind you that we have a Discord server and an audience server. Links down in the description. Now, let me ask you a question. What fraction of integers are even numbers? You most probably will say one half, as in the number sequence, every odd number is followed by an even number, and every even number is followed by an odd number. But what if I told you that this might not be the case? No, I'm not saying the sequence of numbers is wrong, or maybe I am. No, I'm just joking. I'm saying that if we were to represent the numbers in another way, that fact might stop being true. And I have found the representation of the integers which clearly shows that there are in fact infinitely more even numbers than odd numbers. And that representation is best understood visually. So I decided to present it in this video and explain how it works and why it's true as well as a little lesson about infinity and how there can be multiple correct answers in mathematics. First of all, let's start easy, which it won't be unless you know about exponential functions. A number raised to x. Its graph looks like this. You may have heard recently about exponential growth in terms of the spread of the novel coronavirus and you will know that basically this is a type of growth which is multiplicative meaning that from one point to the next the value is multiplied by a certain number and thus the growth gets faster as it continues as you can see on the graph as it happens on an exponential function every step of distance one you take the value gets multiplied by the base of the function so for example the base of 2 to the x is 2. Therefore, if 2 to the 1 is 2, then 2 to the 2, 2 being a distance of 1 from 1, is 2 to the 1, 2, times 2, which is 4, and it's 2. 2 squared is 4. Now that we've cleared that out, let's talk about prime factorization. I know this all seems unrelated, but trust me. It all comes together at the end, just like families at Christmas time. So prime factorization is basically representing a number as a product of primes. Every number has only one possible unique prime factorization product. I don't know about a proof for that, but it's probably out there so you can go search for that. Now, as we all know, 2 is a prime. Therefore, it appears in the prime factorization product of some numbers. In fact, it always appears in even numbers, prime factorization products, and only even numbers. Odd numbers can't be multiples of 2. This is one thing to take note of when finding out the proportion between odd numbers and even numbers. It is also easy to see here that exponentials would appear here, as when a multiple of 4 appears, it can be expressed as 2 to the 2, and this is also true for all exponential values, and usually, prime factorization is written in exponential terms most of the time. Now, let's talk about the main idea. What is the proportion of odd numbers to even numbers? But first, let me change that question up a bit. What is the proportion of numbers whose prime factorization have 2 in them? Well, first, let's define the number system we'll be using. The way we're going to arrange the numbers, where basically it's all arranged by prime factorization in a way. Usually, when we think of a way to arrange the integers, we think of the number line. But what if we wanted to try something else? 
We would have to, since us mathematicians can't handle the simple way of solving things. But seriously, in maths, sometimes the answer can differ depending on where you approach it from. That's why I've decided to think in another way and arrange the numbers in branches. On the base of each branch, we have the odd numbers arranged in order. Then, above those, we have the odd numbers multiplied by 2. This makes them even numbers but not multiples of 4. Please note that no number in this representation is repeated because of the unique prime factorization each number has. Each number's prime factorization product is just the branch basis prime factorization, which should be unique, multiplied by 2 to the number of levels in the branches in the, with the base. The odd numbers being on level 0 and their values multiplied by 2 being on level 1. This shows us that all the numbers here are, in fact, unique. You can also see that the branches are infinite, as we can just keep doubling the end of the branch to get the multiples of 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. As a consequence of each branch being infinite, we can say that, for each odd number, there is a unique group of unique even integers which are in the set of powers of 2 multiplied by that odd number, thus proving that for every odd number there is an infinite number of even numbers. Therefore, there are infinitely more even numbers than odd numbers. You can think of it like a graph, with the odd numbers on the x-axis and the integers on the y-axis where each point represents its x value multiplied by 2 to its y value. Note that all this stuff that I j mentioned just now does not just apply to multiples of 2, even numbers, but also to multiples of any integers. Now you might be wondering, how could this happen? I mean, when you add 3 to 2, it's the same as adding 2 to 3, right? Yes, that's right, don't worry, I'm not changing the laws of the universe, but in this situation, we're working with infinity, an infinite amount of numbers with infinite proportions between two equally infinite groups of in Therefore, weird stuff can happen if you approach it differently, as infinity is not really a number, but rather a very loose concept. This also happens with limits in calculus, which can sometimes meet mislead you to thinking weird stuff, like that one time I tried to calculate a real limit which approaches i and I got i is equal to 1, which is totally not true, as 1 squared is not a negative 1, but just 1. So, moral of the story is, working with infinity can be dangerous and confusing, so unless you know what you're doing, don't base assumptions around it.